Hello and welcome to our Ascension Day service. My name is David Bell. We start from a verse from Psalm 47. God has gone up with a shout and you reply, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we say a greeting to everybody who is watching this, whether you're a member of the family of our church or whether you're a newcomer to the internet and are watching us for the first time. You're most welcome. So let us pray. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And you reply, and also with you. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, for 40 days we have been celebrating with joyful hearts the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, his bursting from the tomb and his defeat of the power of sin and death. He appeared to his disciples many times and told them about the kingdom of God. Today we recall how he left this earth and returned to his Father, ascending into heaven to take his throne over all dominions and powers trusting in his reign over all creation and submitting to his kingly yet loving rule. So let us hear the story of his parting. I'd read for you from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verses 4 to 11. Whilst staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptised with water, but you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit. Not many days from now. So when they have come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? And he replied, It is not for you to know the times or the periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Sumeria and to the ends of the earth. When he said this, and as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them and they said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. So, Alleluia! Christ is risen, and you reply, He is risen indeed. Seeing we have such a great high priest who has passed through the heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us offer him the praise worthy of his name. And we say together, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. and the collect for today. Risen Christ, you have raised our human nature to the throne of heaven. Help us to seek and serve you, that we may join you at the Father's side, where you reign with the Spirit in glory, now and forever. Amen. And now let us continue to praise God in song as we sing over all the earth, 
Lord reign in me. sunset sky but my one request Lord my only aim is that you reign in me again Lord reign in me reign in your power over all my dreams in my darkest hour you are the Lord of all I am so what you reign in first reading is from Ephesians, Ephesians 1 verses 15 to 23. I have heard of your faith in Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what it is to hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us, who believe according to the workings of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in this heavenly place. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, above every name that is named, not only in this age but in all ages to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body the fullness of who fills in all. This is the word of the Lord. You say, thanks be to God. The canticle for for today is from the Revelations 15. All nations shall come and worship you, O Christ, and share in the feast of your kingdom. Great and wonderful are your deeds, Lord God the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O ruler of the nations, who shall not revere and praise your name, O God, for you alone are holy. All nations shall come and worship in your presence, for your dealings have been revealed. To the one who sits on, sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessings and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. All nations have come and worship you, O Christ, and share in the feast of your kingdom. The Gospel is taken from Luke. So hear the Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. 
and you say glory to you O Lord and then he said to them there are these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and he said to them thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem you are the witnesses of these things and see I am sending upon you what my father promised so you stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high and then he led them as far as Bethany and lifting up his hands he blessed them while he was blessing them he withdrew from them and was carried into heaven and as they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and they were continually in the temple blessing God this is the gospel of the Lord praise to you O Christ You know, I don't know all that many Christians, comparatively speaking, who, if asked, name me the top three most important days in the Christian year. Perhaps the top five would include Ascension. Perhaps it depends uh, how long you've been in church, perhaps it depends which kinds of churches you've been in before, but a lot of us don't prioritise focusing on the ascension uh, of Jesus, I think in the way that we should, I, I would say that about myself, as I've um, preached often on ascension day, uh, year after year over these last years, each time I, I look at the stories and scriptures that we use on these days, honestly, it blows my mind. And yet for many of us, we don't really give it that much attention. I don't know how many people are going to join in the service uh, that we have this evening, but I'd be surprised if it's as many as we'd normally get on a Sunday. I could be pleasantly surprised, couldn't I? But I'd encourage all of us to give due thought, due time uh, in the days ahead between ascension and the celebration of the gift of the Spirit to the first Christians and the birthday of the church on Pentecost in nine days time to really thinking what it is about the ascension that was so stunning. First of all that we are told about it in the Bible and second of all that it, it, it's been remembered and we celebrate it and mark it even today. Do you realise the power that God gives to those who believe in him? It's not power like we see around us, which is so often used for selfish gain, for the making of money to make ourselves seem or feel more important than others or to show that we're stronger or greater than others. It's the power of the living God who chose to offer freedom and safety to those who trust in him while we were still a million miles away from being Christians. You might still feel a million miles away from being a Christian, even as you're listening to my words this evening. It's the power that raised Jesus from the dead. It's the same power that brought him to the heavenly realms and gave him authority over all things for the benefit of the church. Again, not so we can be all powerful and hoity-toity, as someone described some churches to me as being or thinking that they are today, but so that we can rejoice in the freedom won for us by Jesus and then get right down into the trenches of life and extend the offer of freedom to others if they would turn to him. At the ascension, his earthly task completed, Jesus took his rightful place next to the Father, promised that the gift the Father had promised the gift of the Spirit would come and invites us 
to partner with him in the things of the kingdom. We're told that when we do partner in the things of the kingdom, repentance for forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name. That's turning around, turning away from the things that we've done wrong, from the things that separate us from God and our neighbour. The forgiveness is possible in the name of Jesus because the name of Jesus has power. It is powerful. There is no other name higher or greater or more powerful than Jesus. The task that he set for his friends and followers, go into all the world and make disciples, heal the sick, raise the dead, heal those who have leprosy, cast out demons. Matthew 10, verse 8. The first Christians took this task and it's been passed on to us through our inheritance as members of his family of faith, part of the body. That's what we're called to do, but we can't do it on our own. He says in Acts 1 verse 8, you will be my witnesses all the way to the ends of the earth. The disciples, they'd known Jesus, seen Jesus, spent time with Jesus. And now they were to tell the story and live the life, show the signs of the power which had been promised to them by Jesus. And we know it was given to them at Pentecost to show that God's love was not just words, but power. That the good news of the gospel was not just words, but the power of God for the salvation, the saving, the freeing of all who believe. We can't physically see Jesus amongst us now, but we have the gift the Father promised, the Holy Spirit who first draws us to God so that we respond to the preaching, that's the speaking of repentance for forgiveness of sins, and then live like the forgiven people that we are, that we don't deserve to be, but that we are the ones who've been given the story to tell, the power to live in and share for the good of all people and the partnership to share in the spreading of that good news, of that gospel. That's all well and good, but the ascension, really, it's about Jesus and the fact that he keeps his promises. In Matthew 28, He'd come to the disciples and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. That's everybody everywhere. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. He told them, what to do and how to do it and said that he would always be with them that was his promise to them that was his promise to us that is his promise to you and to me tonight the task that we have might seem too much for us but we worship the one who has been enthroned on high We belong to the one whose very name has power to heal, to free, to forgive and to save. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him. It's his name that every knee will bow to, that one day every tongue, every voice will confess that he is Lord. He is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So as we think back and look forward tonight, remember this one thing, if you remember nothing else. Jesus is Lord. He wins. He is love. Love wins to the glory of God the Father. And whether you know him or you don't, I can promise you this. He loves you and is inviting you on a new adventure with him starting from this very moment the savior of mankind jesus christ the one who has the authority over everything loves you and is inviting you on a new adventure with him starting from this very moment 
Will you say yes to him and tell his story? Will you say yes to him and call people to change their ways and turn to God? Will you say yes to him and live life his way from this moment on? He says he's going to prepare a place for his friends and followers. He has gone to prepare a place for you, leaving the gift of the promised Holy Spirit while we wait for his return, which is coming. As we spend these next nine days waiting for Pentecost, let's pray. Let's pray for the Holy Spirit to come into our lives in a fresh way, in our church, in a fresh way. Let's pray for it to come in our land, in our neighbourhoods, in our streets, whether they know Christ as Lord yet or not, in a fresh way that God's kingdom might come and his will might be done here, now, in our day, in this time. Jesus Christ is Lord. There is power in his name to heal, to save, to forgive and to free. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him and he calls us to go in his name. Send revival, Lord. Start with me. Revive me. Revive us. In your name I pray. Amen. Let us say together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. So let us say prayers of intercession. Let us join our prayers with those of our Saviour Christ, seeking the Father's blessing and the gift of the Spirit. Jesus Christ, great High Priest, live in forever to intercede for us. Pray for the Church, your broken body in the world. Lord, hear us. And you reply, Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, King of Righteousness, enthroned in the right hand of the, ma of the Majesty on high, pray for the world and make it subject to your gentle rule. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, Son of Man, drawing humanity into the life of God, pray for your brothers and sisters in need, distress or sorrow. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, pioneer of our salvation, bringing us to glory through your death and resi uh, resurrection, surround us with your saints and angels, those who have died, trust in your promise. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, Lord over all things, ascend far above the heavens and fill in the universe. Pray for us who receive the gifts you give us for work in your service. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And Jesus Christ, keep the church in the unity of the Spirit 
and in the bond of peace and bring the whole created order to worship at your feet. For you are alive and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you have exalted your Son Christ Jesus to your right hand and made him the head over all things for his body, the Church. Hear us as we pray for the Church throughout the world. Make us and all your people receptive to the gifts he pours upon us, that we may use them to your glory and the building up of the body of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Thank you to David for leading us through this service so far, helping us to be aware of God's presence with us through this day and through this special act of worship as we remember Jesus is keeping of his promise first to go to be with the Father at the right hand of the Father to pray for us and to send the Spirit to guide us and help us to know the way that we should go. And this evening Jesus says to us, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. If you love me, rejoice because I am going to the Father. Alleluia. My friends, my brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with me, I hope, to do offer those that you are watching this service with, if there are any, a sign of God's peace. We're going to share in communion now. So if you have bread and wine or juice, uh, do have it nearby. And I'll lead us through the prayer of communion, the Eucharistic prayer. And in these next few minutes, we'll uh, join with Christians around the world, remembering the life and death and resurrection and ascension of Jesus Christ the glory of God and for our good. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. And now, God, we give you thanks because after his most glorious resurrection, Jesus appeared to his disciples and in their sight ascended into heaven to prepare a place for us, that where he is, we might also ascend and reign with him in glory. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you didn't reject us, but you came to meet us in Jesus, your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he might live in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. 
as we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory. Send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Looking for the coming of his kingdom, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Lord, we died with you on the cross. Now we are raised to new life. We were buried in your tomb. Now we share in your resurrection. Live in us that we may live in you. I heard the voice of a great multitude crying, Alleluia! The Lord our God has entered into his kingdom. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Alleluia. Now do share in bread and wine if you would like to. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. God our Father, you have raised our humanity in Christ and have fed us with the bread of heaven. Mercifully grant that, nourished with such spiritual blessings, we may set our hearts in the heavenly places through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, for our second song for this evening, a beautiful version of the doxology, Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Praise God from whom all blessings flow. 
praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, our body, heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Sing. Let us pray. As we wait in silence, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we listen to your word, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we worship you in majesty, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your refreshing, make us ready for your coming spirit as we long for your renewing make us ready for your coming spirit as we long for your equipping make us ready for your coming spirit as we long for your empowering make us ready for your coming spirit God the Father, who has given to his Son the name above every name, strengthen you to proclaim Christ Jesus as Lord. Amen. God the Son, who is our great High Priest, passed into the heavens, plead for you at the right hand of the Father. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who pours out his abundant gifts upon the church, Make you faithful servants of Christ, our King. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you for joining with us this evening. 
Thank you to David for his help in preparing and leading this service. We'll return with a Sunday morning service at 10.30 this coming Sunday. Do join us then if you'd like to. For now though, waiting expectantly for the promised Holy Spirit, go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.